Welcome back to my channel. If you're worried about your KDP account getting terminated due to copyright or trademark infringements, then this is the video for you. I'm going to be talking about how we can find out if something is trademarked and how to do everything to not get your KDP account terminated due to a trademark or copyright infringement. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Caroline and I make videos to help you master your mindset and to make money online so that you can build a life you love. If you do enjoy watching videos like this, please take a moment to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you do get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Now, first of all, I do just want to give a little disclaimer here. I am not a lawyer. I am not giving any kind of legal advice. I'm just giving my interpretation of what I know about trademarks and copyright and the information provided by Amazon on this topic. If you do have any concerns about something you want to upload to KDP, or if you have had your account terminated due to copyright issues and you feel that it shouldn't have been, then you need to contact an IP lawyer for further advice. Now, a lot of times we do something accidentally or we use something accidentally in our books that are trademarked or under copyright. We create a book, we give it a title, and we have no idea it's trademarked until sometime down the track, we receive a email from Amazon KDP saying that we have infringed on someone's copyright or on their trademark. And let's talk about why it's important to make sure that you don't create and upload any books to KDP that do infringe on any kind of copyright or trademarks. Now, first of all, for some people, it is their strategy to just go out there and blatantly copy somebody else's designs or ideas and just literally copy exactly whatever is already out there. This is just unethical to try and make money from somebody else's hard work. Somebody else put in all that effort and all that work to create something unique and it's just really unethical and really unfair for somebody else to just come along and copy it and expect to be paid for it. You wouldn't be happy if somebody else copied your stuff so don't do it to anybody else. Secondly, KDP does what it can to protect publishers and authors so that this doesn't happen to them. And so your KDP account will be terminated if you start getting copyright strikes against your books. And you will also most likely lose any unpaid royalties that you have sitting in your account at the time that your account is terminated. So that's pretty bad. You won't have an account and you won't even be able to upload books to KDP anymore. And then thirdly, and probably the worst case scenario is that you can be required to pay royalties to the person, to the original owner of the content or the design or the trademark, if they decide to take it further and sue you. The KDP terms and conditions and content guidelines require that you hold the publishing rights to any content that you upload for sale on Amazon. So copyright and trademarks are two different things and you need to be aware of both and make sure that you're not infringing on either of them. What is copyright? A copyright basically protects original works of authorship and art, such as books, music, movies, things like that. Anything sort of artistic. Generally, in the case of low content books, such as notebooks and journals, this wouldn't ever really be a copyright issue because they are basically just lines on a page. But if you copy a book that has text, for example, a gratitude journal with affirmations or guided journal prompts or something like that, or has images such as coloring books or in activity books, this is infringing on copyright. Somebody doesn't have to register something to be copyrighted Basically, as soon as it is created, it is copyrighted. Now, let me quickly show you an example of what not to do. Now, this is a perfect or a classic example of infringing on copyright. I did see someone actually post about this particular book in a Facebook group and thought it was a really, really great example for this video. And so this is a movie critic notebook. So look at these two books. This one here on the left was created first. So this one created by Sweet Harmony Press was published back in May, 2018. And the copycat was uploaded in December, 2019. So practically like a year and a half later. And what they have done is basically copy the book itself, the cover, there are a couple of slight differences. They obviously couldn't find the exact same icon of this movie projector, but basically they have copied it down to the T. Not only that, they have copied the listing. So the title, the movie critics notebook, the perfect journal for serious movie buffs and film students. 
they have done exactly the same. They have added a few extra keywords in here for keyword stuffing purposes. They do have some ratings here. So obviously people have bought it and this is where it can come into confusion. So people probably bought this thinking it was the original one that was created, but didn't actually get the one from the author that they wanted. And this is why copyright and trademark exists so that people know they're getting the original version of what they're looking for. Now I'm interested to see what this author has also published and they don't have many, only 19 books, but here is another infringement. They're infringing on this Hallmark trademark. This would be trademark, this particular logo, and they've got that on the cover of their book. So customer searching for something from Hallmark would be almost tricked into thinking that this book was created by Hallmark and it's not. That's why people trademark things so that their customers know they're getting the real deal. Now, I am glad that this particular book has a high BSR, which means it isn't selling a lot. And I am happy that the original book has a good BSR. So people are finding this one and buying it more than they're buying the copycat. So I am glad that's happening, but this sort of thing just shouldn't happen. You shouldn't copy someone's hard work, especially make it looking exactly the same. Another example of copyright would be something like the lyrics of the song, Let It Go from the movie Frozen. So you couldn't just take some lyrics from this particular song and put it on the cover of a notebook. That would be infringing on copyright. And talking about movies, guys, anything from a TV show or a movie is just off limits. No, you can't create a Disney coloring book. No, you cannot create a notebook with the characters from Friends on the front of it. Now, I did a quick search for Frozen coloring book to see if there were any that people are infringing on copyright on, which they are for sure. This one here in particular, I imagine, does not have the rights to publish a coloring book with the characters from Frozen in it. But I also came across this one, classic example, 101 characters coloring book, a special collection for fans. You can't do anything on a fan basis. It doesn't matter if you're a fan, people would buy this thinking that it's official merchandise from Disney or Pixar or whoever these characters are from. So if we have a look inside, I'm imagining we're going to have coloring pages from all these different movies. Having them on the cover is copyright. Okay, so we can't actually see over the internal pages, but I'm obviously this is what the interior pages are going to look like. And whoever published this book can get in trouble if somebody reports it. Just stay away from anything related to TVs, movies and music. You might get away with it at first and you think obviously this would get picked up in the approval process of Amazon when you submit your book, but they do get through. And even if you do sell them at some point, it's going to get picked up. Somebody's going to report it or something like that. And the worst case scenario is these companies who are absolutely massive have the power to sue you and make you pay them for the royalties that they lost due to someone buying your book over their official merchandise. And then what is a trademark? Trademarks are words or symbols or designs that a company uses to distinguish to distinguish itself from another company's goods and services. Basically, trademark law exists to prevent customer confusion about the source or who is providing the goods and services that they're wanting to buy. So a brand like Coca-Cola or a brand like McDonald's, they are all trademarked. You can never use the Coca-Cola brand or the McDonald's brand on any merchandise. And in the case of books or specifically low content books, this would be something like the five minute journal. So if we search for five minute journal on Amazon, this is the book here. It is extremely popular. It's got a BSR of 347. It does fall under office products because it's not published by KDP, but a lot of people have tried to copy this who do publish their books with KDP. And this book and its title are a trademarked phrase. So you can't upload a journal to KDP with this title. And that's why you will see lots of other books with similar but slightly different titles. So the five minute gratitude journal the morning magic five minute journal, the five second journal, the three minute morning journal, the six minute journal. So how can you avoid infringing on copyright or on trademarks? First of all, with copyright, it's easy. Don't copy other people's stuff. It's as simple as that. If your cover, your title or your interior looks too much like somebody else's, 
you're infringing on copyright. And the author and the publisher of that book can ask Amazon to remove your listing. If that happens too many times, Amazon will terminate your account. Now, trademarks can be a little trickier because you don't just know whether a particular word or phrase is trademarked and things that seem totally innocent or things that seem like they wouldn't be trademarked sometimes are. And they can only be trademarked for certain goods or services, making things even trickier. So someone can register a trademark for use on clothing. So does that mean it's okay to use it on books? See what I mean about how easy it can be to be confused about trademarks. Now I have trademarked something myself in the past and you have to pay for each category that you want to register the trademark under. So if you're just a small business or you're just a sole person running a side hustle like a lot of us are, you may not have the money to be able to register a trademark under every category. So you might just pick the one category that you are selling goods in, but that doesn't mean somebody else then can't use it on a different type of product because you aren't registered for that product that they're wanting to use it for. So for example, you might register your trademark to be used on t-shirts, but someone wants to print it on a book. That's fine because you haven't registered it under books. Whereas a large company like McDonald's, like Coca-Cola, they have big budgets so they can register their trademark across all categories so that nobody can ever use it on anything. Does this make sense? So I will show you a couple of places that you can go to try to find out if something is trademarked. Now, again, if it is something that you are worried about using, seek legal advi advice from a lawyer. Just because we're doing these types of searches doesn't mean necessarily that you're 100% okay to use something, but we are doing what we can to limit our liability and to try and do the right thing and try and find out as much information about something before deciding whether we are okay to use it or not in our books. Now something else is each country does have its own database of trademarks and something can be trademarked in one country and not another. So you would need to check each country's trademark website for each marketplace that you want to sell on. Since I think most of us sell on Amazon US, then that's what I'll show in this video. So to check if something is trademarked, you want to go to the United States Patent and Trademark office website. They do have a lot of information on their website if you want to learn about trademarks and IPs and things like that. And I will link to this website down in the description below. Now also just to make things even more confusing, a trademark can be registered just within a particular state in the US or they can register a federal trademark, meaning it's registered or trademarked across the whole of the US. So if you want to do a search for a trademark, we just come over here to trademarks, searching trademarks, and then we're looking for the trademark electronic search system and we're going to do a basic word mark search. Now here we just choose live because we're only interested in the trademarks that are current. If we're looking at live and dead, it will also show trademarks that are no longer registered, ones that didn't get approved or for whatever reason, the person didn't continue with registering the trademark. So we're just gonna search for live and we'll do a search for the five minute journal so we can see what a search looks like and we submit the query. And so this is what comes up. So we can see that five minute journal five minute journal and five minute journal for kids is registered and live. Now, the reason that there's two the same is because they will be registered under different categories. So this first one here, the five minute journal is registered as an electronic day planner, downloadable mobile software application for used in journaling, tracking and logging daily activities, da, 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 da. If we go back and look at the second one, this one will be registered under something else. So this is where the trademark comes in for us on Amazon KDP. It's registered blank journal books, notebooks, drawing pads, and writing pads. And this number here, this IC number 016, that's the book code. And so this is where we can see that this particular phrase is trademarked for use in books. Now, something else that you might notice down here is under the owner, there will either be a registrant or an applicant. I would steer clear of any trademark that even says applicant because it will most likely be trademarked sometime in the near future anyway and that will just mean you'll need to take all your books down once the trademark is official and then it's just a bunch of work for nothing all right so let's try something else let's just type in something like coloring book you don't have to put in the exact phrase if you're just curious about what is trademarked we could just put something in like coloring book this will give us an idea of things that we can't use so this is a good idea 
to look at my favorite coloring book so you cannot call a coloring book my favorite coloring book the coloring book so that is registered for art art kind of things so i would say that's okay for printed books big coloring book so if you were thinking of naming something big coloring books that's a no-go too big fat coloring book so that's also registered under books so it's really interesting to see what is trademarked things that you would never think would be trademarked are and so this is why you need to do these kind of searches before creating any kind of books or at least before uploading them but it's probably a good idea to check before you settle on a name for your book something else which you may have heard of is bullet journaling now people think this is just a type of journaling but it is trademark a way you can get around this is something that is exactly the same as a bullet journal is a dot grid journal and it's just a page with dots on it but bullet journaling is extremely popular and so you kind of think well that's just a type of journaling it's not something that can be trademarked but it is it is actually a name that somebody came up with instead of calling it a dot grid journal they've called it a bullet journal and they've trademarked it and so you cannot call any type of journal a bullet journal aside from doing searches on the United States Patent and Trademark Office website. Other things I'd suggest you do is just do a search on Amazon itself for the title or the author name you are wanting to use to see if it is in fact already in use by somebody else. It doesn't necessarily mean it's trademarked, but if someone else is using the name you want, then it could definitely prompt you to do further research into whether you can use it or not. And even if it's not trademarked, do you really want to use a book title or author name that is already in use by someone else? I would rather have something unique so that my books stand out from the others. I wouldn't want to call my book or create an author name the same as someone else. I would also do a Google search to see what comes up and see if there are businesses outside of Amazon using the titles or phrases you want to use because again you don't really want to use something that is already in use by someone else just so that you don't look the same as other people or other businesses because it can just cause confusion for customers when searching. So even if things aren't trademarked really think about whether you want to create books and create author names and things like that that are already in use by other people there are also a couple of other places you need to be careful about accidentally or purposely <laughs> infringing on trademarks one is your author name if you are choosing a brand name for your author name so for example say you are creating a range of gratitude journals and let's say you come up with the name grateful publishing because it's a gratitude journal it's all about being grateful about what you have and so you want to create a brand called grateful publishing and you think nothing of it well this is actually a trademark name so you can get in trouble for using it it's trademarked for books ebooks audiobooks music and illustrations also keep in mind you can't use trademarked names or words or phrases in your description of your Amazon listing either and you are also not allowed to use trademarked words or phrases in your seven keyword slots. Now in saying all of this if you are running ad campaigns for any of your books it is a totally different story and you have free reign to use any words any phrases, author names, brand names, product names, etc. for keywords that you are targeting in your ads. So trademark stuff does not apply when you're creating ads. I hope this video has cleared up some questions or queries that you may have had about trademarks and copyright and what you can do to avoid getting your KDP account terminated due to infringing on something that is already trademarked. If you would like me to keep making videos like this, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any further questions about copyright about trademark and things like that pop them down in the comments below I will do my best to answer them and if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any more videos that I make like this then don't forget to subscribe